So the first thing we're of course going to want to do is open up our Silhouette Design Studio software. I am using Silhouette Studio 4.2 Business Edition. If I'm not mistaken, this same process does work for the Design Edition. So if you have either Business or Design, this video is definitely for you. If you have Standard Edition, um, it's a completely different process. But as the video is so titled, we're working with phone grips. So first what we want to do is get this space here. We want to bring it down to the actual amount of space that we will have to work with because essentially we want this. Ignore those two on the side. But essentially we want this. We want our phone grip designs all in one. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to the right side menu and select your page setup panel. In your page setup panel under size, excuse me, next to size, you will select letter. My apologies. You'll select letter. What this does is this brings your sizing down to eight and a half by 11, which is your standard size sheet of paper that you would feed into your printer. Um, the, the printer that I am using for my particular project, I'm using my HP NV 4500. It's just a regular inkjet printer. The next thing we want to do is back again in our page setup panel, we're going to click this option here for registration marks. And here next to style, drop down and select type one. This is basically selecting the type of machine that you have. So if you have a silhouette cameo, a portrait or a curio, this first type is for you. And as you saw, it brings up your registration marks. So as per normal, you have your red lines that give you that safety, but you also have these black lines that the machine is going to use to register to do its job. And then these gray areas are where you want to make sure that you don't place anything inside of these gray areas, because if you do, then it will not cut. So now that we have our space set up, let's get our, our, our items that we're using for our patterns, let's get that into our library. So you'll go to your library, file, library, import to library. Now my particular pictures, I downloaded off of the internet. However you get your pictures, it's fine. Um, I have four particular flags that I have not done yet. That is Japan, Canada, USVI, and Belize. So whichever pictures you're doing, wherever you find it in your computer, locate your pictures, select which ones you want to open and select OK. So after you select OK, it will bring them into your user designs per normal. And you want to make sure that you select the ones you need. So I have USVIs already selected here. You'll hold your control key. I am using a Windows computer. I believe it's command on Apple. But control key, Japan, Canada, and Belize. And then you just want to click and drag over here into patterns. So now, as you can see, VI, Japan, Canada, and Belize are already are inside here of my patterns folder. So you come back over to design. On your left side menu panel, where it says drawing tools, select ellipses and when you're drawing ellipses the ellipses or the circle make sure to hold down the shift key this will make sure that you are drawing a perfect circle now it doesn't really matter how big or small you make the circle we just want to get the circle on the page so you know, draw the circle and i'll draw mine big just so that you can see um, what this next step actually does for you so you let go and now you have your circle select your select tool <laughs> and then select the circle. Now what you want to do is make sure that your aspect ratio is locked before we make this next size change. Your aspect ratio is right up here at the top. It's this icon. Typically it's open like that. You want to make it closed. Next you're going to go next to your W which represents width. You'll select this number and you'll type 1.57. This is the size of your standard phone grip. 
Now, if you want to measure your phone grip that you have, just to double check and make sure, I would definitely encourage doing so. My particular phone grips, it's the 1.57 is what's going to fit and completely cover um, that surface. So once you type in 1.57, you'll hit enter. And what this does is now that you have the aspect ratio locked, it automatically fills in height because you entered it as the width. You're locking it in because you want a perfect circle. So it fills in the height as well. So you just hit enter again and that'll be it. You'll be done with changing the size. Next, you want to make however many circles you need. So if you need 10 circles, do 10 circles. I only need four, so I'm going to control C. That just copies the circle. And then I will control V three times. Oh, I didn't control C, hold on, sorry. There we go, control V three times. And now I have my four circles that I need. So what you'll do at this point is just position your circles inside of your workspace so that they aren't too close, but you're still maximizing your workspace that you have available to you when you print. Because of course, we don't wanna have them spread out all over the page if we're only doing four circles. And then it's kind of a waste of the, the printable vinyl because you can actually print something if you need to that's small and reuse a piece of paper. I say you can do it because I've done it. Um, other people might not suggest it, but that will be something that you just have to um, determine on your own, I guess. So now we're ready to fill in with the pattern, right? So we will select the circle. We'll come over here to the right side again to our fill panel. Open up your fill panel. At the top, you have solid, gradient, and pattern. We want pattern. And up here under pattern, once you scroll past all the ones that come with your software, down at the bottom, you'll see all of the patterns that you have put in your pattern folder in your library. And the way it's organized is by newest first, oldest last. So anything you upload recently will show up at the beginning of your list. So I want to start with... I'll start with Belize. This is gonna be the easiest one that I don't really have to make much adjustments to. So you just select it and it fills in your circle perfectly. So let me just show you what options you do have in case you have to make any type of adjustments. I'm just zooming in here. Um, if you aren't familiar with how to zoom in, it's this mag magnifying glass over here with the plus in the middle. But just zoom in, Belize flag, if you need to make any adjustments, um, if you don't see this option here, if yours looks like this, just select this here that says advanced options and it drops down everything you need. So if you need to mirror your pattern, if you need to flip it any which way, you just press one of those options. This aspect ratio, it either locks it in to exactly how it is or it stretches it. I don't mess with this. I usually just leave it how it is. There's only a few select flags I have where I've actually had to use that. Um, and I'll explain why in a moment. But moving on, you have your rotate pattern. Um, now, because this is in a circle, it does not really matter how you rotate the pattern because it's in a circle. But if you're using any particular type of other shape, um, you can use these presets, which rotates it 90 degrees or what have you, or you can use the slider here. And as you can see, it just moves it around your shape. And if you don't wanna use the slider, you want to use something that's gonna be a little bit more accurate, they do have arrows that you can toggle. Just gonna move mine back where it was. Scale is basically your zoom tool. It allows you to zoom in or out of your pattern. So you can zoom in, it brings you really, really close. And I like how it doesn't really distort the image too much, but you can also zoom out if you want to add more of the pattern into your particular shape. But of course, I only wanna see this. 
right? So let me just undo. Um, and then the last thing down here is pan pattern. So if you select pan pattern, what happens is if you look at your shape, you now see this little circle here in the middle. You just select that circle and now you can move your pattern around inside of your shape anywhere you want it to go. I'm going to show you something right quick. I just want you guys to be aware of this. If you are in your shape, I'm going to zoom in closer just to make sure you can really see what I'm talking about. If you're in your shape and say you scale it, let's say I make mine smaller so that I can see more of the red. If you look at the red, either the top or the bottom, it doesn't matter. As I scale it, you see a little gray line. That gray line is basically the end of the pattern. It's where the next flag begins. You see that? You want to make sure that that line is not showing when you are making your, if you're doing something like I am, you wanna make sure that line is not showing when you make your phone grips um, because it will print. And of course you wouldn't want to see that on your, on your grip, especially if this is for a customer. So whenever you're working, just make sure that that gray line is not showing. But for me personally, um, this is actually done. Belize was a pretty easy one. So next we'll do Canada. So you just select your next circle, select your pattern, Canada here. I'm gonna scale this back just a little bit so I can see more of the red. But I'm also making sure that I don't scale back too much because I don't wanna go into the next flag. Um, and again, we want to avoid the gray line. So I think this actually looks pretty good for Canada. Go here, Japan. Now, Japan is different. Um, the Japan picture that I got, not only does it have a border, so that's where you're seeing that black, gray looking line on top and the bottom. Um, but if I leave it how it is without showing the border, it really just looks like a red dot. And I know that that's what Japan's flag is, but I don't want it so big. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to manipulate the picture so that I can put it in there and make the dot a bit smaller. And that's actually the same thing I'm going to have to do for VI. Because if I try to scale back on VI and include the entire seal, you can now see the top and bottom flag. And again, I don't want that. So let me show you how I make a get around to those two issues. I'm going to open a new um, design space here. It doesn't really matter the size because um, we're not really using this. So you'll open your folder where your picture is and you'll drag and drop the picture into your workspace. It's Japan and VI. Now VI is gonna be a little bit more simpler, so I'm gonna do that one first. Select the picture, you hold shift, and make the picture smaller. You're holding shift again to keep that aspect ratio. You're gonna come over here to your drawing tools, select rectangle, we're just going to draw a rectangle here. Nothing too serious. Doesn't really matter how small it is, but you don't want it to be too big. And I'll explain that in a second. So we're going to select the rectangle. I want to fill my rectangle with white because the background on the VI flag is white. We're going to come up here to the top and send the rectangle to back. That way, when I bring this VI down over here, it'll go right over the rectangle. Now, I believe this should be fine, but what I'm going to do is just make this rectangle a little bit bigger. If you wanna know how I'm expanding out from the center, I hold down Shift and Alt at the same time. 
all is what makes it expand from the center and then shift, of course, again, keeping that aspect ratio. So just release, and that's that. So you'll now select both options, both objects, excuse me. You go to File, Save Selection, Save to Hard Drive. So I'm going to save this as USVI, but I'm going to come here and I'm going to change it to either PNG or JPEG. It doesn't really matter which one. Um, I'll just choose JPEG. Hit OK. Leave this how it is. Don't mess with anything here. Just hit save. You'll come over to your library, file, go through this process again, import to library, choose USBI, and you see already how it's smaller against the white. So we'll select that, bring it into patterns, go to design, back to your original project. And you're, you see how your new pattern is here. We're now going to fill it with the new VI and we'll be able to zoom in. Pan pattern a little bit, just gonna bring it over. And that is that. So now my VI flag fits in fine, exactly how I want it to. So we're gonna do this again for Japan but we're gonna do it a little bit differently. The first thing we wanna do is get rid of this border here. Very simple, just come over to the left-hand side, choose the eraser, and erase the border. It doesn't matter that the white stays, but we definitely wanna make sure we don't have any of the, the black border there. So select tool, excuse me, drawing tool, rectangle, draw yourself a rectangle, I don't know if I want to make this one too big. So I'll probably do something like this. Fill it with white. Oh, sorry. Select it. <laughs> Fill it with white. And then drag this. Oh, send it to back. I am just missing all of my steps, aren't I? <laughs> send it to back and then drag the flag right over top. Select them both. Save the selection to the hard drive. Don't save it to the library. Um, we'll just call, oh, did I have to save it? I don't know, it did. I think I pressed the button. Yeah, I didn't mean to do that. Um, Japan, and remember, save as JPEG or PNG, it doesn't matter. Okay, save library. Import to library, choose our smaller Japan flag. Bring that right over here. Go back. And there we go. So now it's smaller. And I know it's still, you know, it still looks like a red dot, but the fact is it's not so, so big. Um, I can, but now I have much more room to be flexible with the aspect ratio. I can make it as big or as small as I want instead of being as limited as I was when I had the original picture. So I'm probably just going to do this size. Um, it's looking a little bit off centered. So bring this over. And that is that. So what you would do at this point is you would just fill in however many circles that you have um, so that you can, you know, move forward to the next step. I am going to select these, move them into my original file, and I hope they all fit. Because <laughs> as you can see, I am definitely running out of space. Oh, and I'll also show you guys the, the two, no, excuse me, the four flags where I had, where I did have to use that stretch aspect ratio because of how the, the, the flag is. There's, there was just no way around it, honestly, which is okay, but. Okay, 
So everything fits nicely. Nothing's in any gray areas. But these are the flags here. So um, is Bermuda, Cayman, TCI, and BVI, excuse me, Turks and Caicos Islands and British Virgin Islands. Um, their flags, they all still have the English flag or the Great Britain flag, what have you, um, but they also have their seal. And so what happened is if I go here and I leave it how it is, how it's supposed to be, like not stretched, it's very hard to get both the seal and the flag into the circle. And I can't resize the circle, right? Because I needed to fit on my phone grip. So I just deal with the stretch aspect ratio. It's, it's nothing I can really do about it. So set that back how it was. There we go. All right. So now the next step is to print. So what we'll do, you can either control P or you can go up to file, print, and you'll just select whatever printer is on your network, whatever printer you normally use. Again, I'm using my HP NV4500, so we will print to there. Now, pardon my dust, <laughs> but what I do want to show you here on your printer, when you are using your printable vinyl, you are printing on the flat side. You are not printing on the glossy side. So make sure that you are aware on your printer how you place your paper inside. This symbol here, it shows you how you should flip your paper based on where you want what you're printing to go. So mine shows me that if I want my printable vinyl, if I want my non-glossy side to be the side that has what I'm printing on it, then that means that my non-glossy side needs to face down and my glossy side needs to face up. So now that you have your paper inputted properly, you'll hit print. Let it go through its process and you are ready to go. So now that we have our pictures printed, now on to everyone's favorite part, cutting. So I am actually using my um, 12 by 24 mat for this project. Of course, I would recommend using a 12 by 12 but I recently just washed my 12 by 12 and I need to apply the stuff to make it sticky again. So 12 by 24 is all I have. Um, what you want to do is of course, peel back the protective layer from your mat. Now I don't peel mine all the way off um, only because with such a large mat, it's such a hassle to get it back on. So I'll peel it down to about the 12 mark. Since I know that this is 11 and a half, so maybe we'll put it back to like 13. And then now we place this onto our mat. So you just want to, of course, make sure that it's lined up as perfectly as you can. Right there at the corner. And then go ahead and stick it down. Now I did wait some time before I um, started doing this part because I want to make sure that the ink is, sorry guys, I'm trying to get this as perfect as possible. Um, I want to make sure that the ink is dry before I run it through, before I run it through the machine because as it moves, I really just don't want any of the designs getting messed up because then I have to reprint them and that's just a headache, of course. So, that's a little bit better. Alright, got that lined up. I'm still skeptical, so I'm not going to touch anywhere where there's ink. But you just want to get it stuck down on the mat. Done, turn on the machine. Mine went to sleep. I had it on earlier. So now 
that it is on. We'll load it into your machine. So now that you've loaded it into your machine, you'll come back over here to the computer. Now please learn from my mistake and take this next step seriously. If you are not using a 12 by 12 mat to cut your work, make sure you have you come over to your page setup, you come to your cutting mat, and you drop down and you select your 12 by 24 mat. Okay? If you do not do that, it's not going to cut properly. I learned this the hard way. Learn from my mistakes. Do not waste your printable vinyl and try and do it on your own. Just follow what I'm saying. And if you're using a 12 by 12 mat, leave that alone. Leave it at 12 by 12. But remember, I'm using my 12 by 24. So you'll come over here to send. From send, you will see that all of your circles are ready to be cut. You'll select printable vinyl. Mine's already selected, of course, but you'll select printable vinyl from your drop down menu. Now, again, from personal experience, um, the force that it uses to cut the vinyl. It's a bit much to me. So I dropped it down from 20 to 12 and I find that that is just a bit more, I, don't know, I guess better is the word. It doesn't really punch so much into the vinyl. So I dropped mine down to 12. You can of course test before you do yours, but because I already know that this works for me, I'm just gonna go ahead and send, make sure it's connected. Go ahead and send. <laughs> So what it's doing now is it's reading the registration marks. Once it finishes reading all three registration marks, now the magic happens, <laughs> so to speak. So now, we will unload from the cutter, show this back from your cutting mat, of course recover your cutting mat, keeping it clean, or as clean as you can. <laughs> Now that everything is cut, you can see it more on VI in Canada and Japan. Canada and Japan. <laughs> but now that everything is cut, we'll move along to actually putting these on the grips. Okay, so now we are ready to apply our, excuse me, our printed vinyl to the foam grips. Now, what I like to do with anything, no matter what I'm doing, if I'm sticking something to it, I like to wipe it down with alcohol. That removes any finger oils, any dirt that is on it that you cannot see. So I just keep some alcohol in this little jar thing that I got from the dollar store. Just put some on and just wipe it down. It doesn't have to be perfect. It will dry on its own because, of course, that's what alcohol does. Um, but again, we have so much oil on our fingers. And I have had plenty projects mess up because I did not do this step. Now, if you don't want to do this step, that is perfectly fine. That is up to you. I just like to do it for peace of mind. Now, these are going to get covered with epoxy anyways. So... You can technically say that it doesn't matter because of how strong epoxy is. However, for anyone who does tumblers, 
you are well aware that if you do not prep properly, even epoxy will come right off the cup very easily. So it gets a little dirty because it's still like taking off a little bit of the paint. So if I wasn't covering it, I I would care a little bit more, but Now, of course, foam grips do come in a plethora of colors. However, I only ordered black and white as I wasn't actually fully sure what I was going to do with them yet. Um, I'd probably still just stick to black and white. But maybe as I do like glitter foam grips and things like that, I'll probably add in some colors. So the next part is really simple and straightforward. We're just going to take off your design. Excuse me. We're going to take off your design and apply it to your foam grip. Okay. So with printable vinyl, you do not use transfer paper. It's basically a sticker. So you'll peel it up off of its carrier sheet not carrier sheet. Well, we'll call it a carrier sheet. <laughs> we'll pick it up off its carrier sheet and then we'll just apply it to the foam grip. Now, what I have noticed with this process of um, print then cut, it never cuts quite perfectly. And you would think it would because you put the image into the shape and then it's supposed to cut it like so. But what I notice is if you look here on the Trinidad flag, right here at the bottom, see that white line? Because it didn't cut a perfect circle. As you can see here at the top, we left some there. So I've kind of just, I guess, taken it as a normal thing. I don't like it. I'm not okay with it. I wish I knew how I could fix it but I haven't learned how to fix it yet. So until then, I'll just deal with it as best I can. So I'm not gonna make you guys sit here um, the entire time that I do all this. So we're just gonna speed through this part as I get all of the flags onto their respective foam grips. Okay, so clearly I cannot count as I do have two left and no pop sockets here, but I have more, but I don't know if something's going on with my counting. I guess I'll do another white and we'll make that other one black. Okay, so I actually want to show you guys something. I intentionally left USVI for last. I want to show you. Remember how I said when you're sizing your image inside of the circle, you want to make sure that that gray line is not there? I did not realize that the gray line was actually there on my USVI flag. So if you notice right here, right at the top, see that line there? It prints out red. But that's the gray line that I was talking about in um, in the studio. So this is a mistake. This is a mistake sheet that, that I have. Um, and if you notice, you can actually see it a little bit more there down into the circle. But I had to do a recut. And it's it, I didn't realize what it was before until I had to cut it again. Um, 
and I actually didn't realize it was there until I really had to zoom in on the image inside of the studio. But I'm hoping and I am correct in my hoping. Um, it didn't it didn't really come off on the circle here, so I will be able to use this just fine. But if something like that happens, especially with how small it is, I would say just take an exacto knife and cut around it and you'll be fine. But we are all done here. All the images are on. And our next step is, well, my next step is, you can, of course, be finished. It can be done as is. But my next step is epoxy because I want to seal my image and make sure that it'll last even longer than a normal sticker would. So let's get on to the epoxy part. So now that we have our, for lack of a better word, stickers on our phone grips, it is now time to epoxy. So I'm going to move these off to the side. And I'm gonna show you what you need for doing the epoxy. The first thing we're going to be using is the um, Amazing Clearcast. I got this from, I don't even remember. I You can find it at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, or Joanne. Um, because I'm still a little new to doing epoxy type products, I have not made the jump to investing in products like um, what is it, uh, like Illuminite and Full Rizzle and Pro Marine? I know that they're out there. It's just while I'm practicing, I want something I have easy access to. So Amazing Clear Class, find it in most of your um, hobby stores. So you have the Amazing Clear Cast. Let me show you what's inside. And yes, mine has been used. It comes with part A. And part B, you do have to mix them equally. If you do not mix them equally, your epoxy will not set properly. And trust me, that is annoying. Um, I choose to mix mine with this um, plastic spatula thing. I got it in a some set that I bought from Michaels. But it's really easy because I just use it to mix and then I'll wipe it off with a baby wipe and I can use it over again. This is what I put my epoxy in when I'm measuring. Um, I use the milliliter side, so that there. Of course, gloves to be safe. And then you will need um, a lighter, preferably one like this. Or if you have a torch, you can use a torch. I just don't have a torch, so I'm using a lighter. So let's get started. Um. We are actually doing this together. I have not epoxied phone grips before, so I don't know exactly how much I will need for the amount of phone grips that I have. I believe it's, what, 24? So what I'm going to do, oh, of course. You also need a cup something to put your mixed epoxy in. <laughs> so, my bad. Clear cut works better. Um, or you can use something that's like a silicone something just to, you want something where you can see the epoxy and I'll tell you why in a little bit. So, A side, I think I'm going to do I really want to make sure I have enough left. So I'm actually going to do 40 or should I do 30? I'll do 40. I'm going to do 40 milliliters. So that is 20 of each. So your A side is your thick side. And again, you want to make sure it's definitely level. I feel like 40 may be too much. I'm going to do 30. You want to make sure it's level. Now with the thicker one, um, as you're pouring, just let it settle. Because it is thick, it, it, it takes a little longer to settle. And by the time you 
if you're pouring too fast by the time you let it settle it'll settle above how much you actually need which can be annoying so A side done. Your B side is thinner, so it'll pour a little bit easier, but still you want to pour and then you know give it a little give it a second to just settle. See how much smoother that pours? So now what you want to do is take your clear plastic cup and pour both sides in. And I just like to make sure that I scratch out the sides and get out as much as I can because again I want level. I want to make sure that there's equal parts in both. I know some people, um, I've seen some people use a scale, so, you know, they'll say, oh, I'm going to do 15 grams or something like that, or milligrams, whatever it is. So they do it by weight, which is actually a huge convenience, but again, still new, so no, I have not invested in a miniature scale, at least not yet. Okay, those I will wipe out with a um, baby wipe later. Baby wipes are your best friends when it comes to this type of work. Um, let me just turn on an extra light here. Make sure you guys are seeing everything clearly. All right, so remember I was explaining or I was saying that you want to make sure you have a clear cup and this is why. So if you can see as I'm stirring it, and I'm stirring it as slower than I normally would. Usually when I use epoxy book cups, I'll stir as fast as I want, but this is a different project, so I want to stir a little bit slower. But you can see that it got cloudy, right? What you want to do when you're mixing your epoxy is to make sure that your epoxy is mixed and completely clear, and that's how you'll know it's ready to be used. As you're mixing, try not to lift, whatever you're using to mix it, try not to lift it out of the epoxy that creates bubbles, um, but also make sure that you are scraping the sides, scrape the bottom to make sure everything is mixing in there. is almost there. It's just easier to see if you've achieved that clear state um, if you're using a clear cup. Now sometimes when I'm doing really small amounts I might use the plastic shot glasses that I, not shot glasses, plastic shot cups that I got from the Dollar Tree. but. Everyone has their own method. But as you can see, it's actually looking pretty clear. 
going to keep going for just a little bit more. I know some people say stir for exactly three minutes or, you know, stir for however many minutes. I have never gone by time. I go by what I see. And if I see that it's clear, then it's fine. And that has not failed me yet, so to each his own. And that is that. It is clear. Everything is mixed. And now we can add this on top of our foam grips. Now I have this one here. This is a, a practice one. As you can see, it's a double to the Trini one that I have there. So I'm going to practice on this one first before we move on to the rest of them. So, um,. Depending on how you like to work, you can put gloves on. It's, I feel like for this particular project, it's not necessary. If you were doing something like, you know, a tumbler like that, well, of course you would, you know, need gloves. But again, it's to each his own. There's, because this is a, um, a chemical reaction type of thing and you want to be as safe as, safe as possible, like I know you're supposed to wear a mask because there's fumes. You may not smell them, but they are being emitted. You're supposed to wear gloves just in case there's contact. Follow all the safety instructions that are on the box um, so that you protect yourself. Okay, so what you're supposed to do is just take a little bit out. If you're not using one of these, feel free to use a any type of mixing stick. Um, mixing sticks do actually come with the amazing clear cast so that is an option um, I just like this again because I can wipe it off and that's that so you take a little bit out on your whatever and you just pour it right in the middle now of course you won't need much because you're just really just covering the image to get it sealed on there. And can I just say that I like this already because I really don't like how flat the sticker looks. I am like, I'm the one person who will bling just about anything because I don't like boring stuff. So for this to now be turning into like a shiny type of something there. I love it. And again, you don't need much. Another thing you'll want to do, which I probably should have done, um, lay down like a small piece of plastic. I'm sure you can use like a a grocery bag or something like that just to protect your surface but as you can see this desk has gone through so much <laughs> um, I kind of just do whatever I want on it and that's that so what I'm doing now I'm not really adding anything but I'm kind of just dragging the epoxy around the, the edge to make sure that the edge is sealed You don't have to put more on it to drag it around the edge, just drag some from the top and drag it around the edge. The good thing about epoxy is it settles and it'll settle evenly, so that's that. And then now what you'll do is hit it with your light. Now you don't want to hit it too long because you do not want to burn your epoxy, but the point is to pop the bubbles so and just run it along quick 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 and 
this is kind of why you also um, slowly stir the epoxy because the slower you stir it, um, the less bubbles are get, that get created and you won't have to, you know, heat it up so much. But that is that. That is done. And let me take my phone down so I can give you guys a closer look. Sorry, this is the almost finished product. So you see how it has that nice shine on it? Like I like that compared to when you sit it next to this one. Such a difference. Why? Bring that down a little bit. There we go. Such a difference. Such a difference. All right, so time to tackle the rest of these. I'll probably do a couple more on camera and then I'll don't want you to have to sit here for 24 different um, phone grips. So we will just move this one back over here. I'm trying to see if it'll be better if I use it sitting up. The other thing I know I remember learning, you want to make sure that you are working on a level surface. If you are not working on a level surface, the epoxy will run in whatever direction you're leaning off to, um, which of course would mean that your phone grip would not be smooth on the top. So make sure that you're working on a level surface. You can um, get a leveler at, I got mine from the Dollar Tree. The Dollar Tree is so amazing, isn't it? <laughs> I got mine from the Dollar Tree. Um, I am working on my desk, so I already know it's level, but if I was working on, say, my table, I know that one has a little bit of issues as far as levels, so. Temperamental. All right. And you can see the bubbles. You'll be able to see where the bubbles are. It's just don't let your lighter, your torch, whatever you're using, just don't let it sit on it too long. I'll do one more country with you guys. Um, let's do let's do Haiti. And I do like it lifted up, so you might like yours flat. Um, I think I like mine lifted. All right, guys. So as you can see, I have been working, um, but while I was working, I was kind of reviewing the. The, the initial video and I realized I did Haiti out of focus you guys couldn't really see what I was doing so just to be fair I want to give you one more phone grip so let's do Grenada and so far everything has been pretty smooth um, I did have a hair very small hair gets stuck in one of the one of the gets stuck in the epoxy on one of the grips but with that I just use tweezers I use some needle nose tweezers I either I pluck it out or I just use one edge and just kind of dig it out like I can see here on camera
get it, you can move it off to the side. <laughs> there it is. Alright. And that's that. Like, really simple fix to get the hair out, but... It's like the more I do it, of course, the more I'm getting pretty comfortable with the process. So... And I really do love all of these. Like, I really love the addition of the epoxy. It just adds more to it. My only, so my only concern um, is more so with the brand of epoxy that I'm using. And not that there is anything wrong with the brand. However... All epoxy, no matter what epoxy you use, all epoxy eventually yellows. The only difference between the epoxies as far as the yellowing is when it will yellow. So some will take much longer than others to for the yellowing to eventually happen. So... I'll need to make sure that I get one of those um, epoxies that don't yellow quickly. And when I say quickly, I'm talking about like years down the road, but still. <laughs> I don't want something that's going to yellow too fast. Um, if I'm not mistaken, what is the one that I wanted to use? It's not full rizzle. It's some diamond thing. I don't know the name of it. I have the, the web page saved, but I forget the actual name of the epoxy. Um, but I know it has a a longer, I guess, rate of time. Or how long that it takes for it to eventually start yellowing. So I know that that's the one that I want to use for all of my projects. Cups, foam grips, anything. I'm actually thinking of making coasters at some point. Some of these bubbles are just really stubborn, but you still can't hold the flame there too long because what also happens, or could happen, it hasn't happened to me yet, um, when you heat up epoxy, it becomes very fluid. Like if you work with cups um, and you, you know, pour epoxy on a cup, say if you like to put acrylic paint in your epoxy or glitter, anything like that, you know that you'll just drizzle it on the cup and then you hit it with heat and everything really just starts moving. It's because you've added the heat. So I don't want that to happen to the foam grips with the epoxy like falling off the side because it's too fluid but that's that all right back to the little bit that I have left here and I'll come back and give you guys a closer video all right guys so I am actually all done here and as promised this is the closer video of all of the phone grips they all have epoxy on them All the bubbles have been popped and at this point they're just setting to cure. Um, I did end up burning the epoxy on a couple of them and that's because because I'm doing so many eventually as I was working along the epoxy started to set um, so it was getting a little bit more difficult to pop the bubbles. So actually right here on the Jamaican one you can see right there you see where my tweezers are pointing that is actually burnt epoxy. So what I'm going to do to get rid of it, I'm just going to heat it up. I'm going to run the fire over it just a little bit. And then if you just take your tweezers and just run it along the top, right where the burnt part is, it comes right off. Because it's not like you burned all the way into the epoxy. It's just kind of like that top layer there that's burnt. Um, now remember I did 30 milliliters of epoxy and it was 
definitely enough to cover but again it's if you're not working fast enough it'll get a little bit more difficult to work with but I had enough left to make this so I added in one two three four five I added in five different glitters into the epoxy after I heat it with my heat gun because remember it was starting to set um, I added in five different glitters and I just spread it on same process start in the middle and just work my way out um, and then I spread it on sorry it's kind of spilling over the edge here you see right there you see it I might have to get that up right quick but let me just wrap this up um, I have a feeling that with glitter foam grips you have to do a second layer of epoxy just to kind of seal everything and make it really smooth um, but I will look more into that tomorrow but I'm gonna let these cure for I want to say 24 hours because right now it is it's midnight midnight 30 so I'll probably check on them tomorrow afternoon so 12 30 in the afternoon and we'll see how they're looking see you guys tomorrow all right guys so this is the finished product um, I am so incredibly happy with how these turned out none of them have bubbles um, a few of them have like really small blemishes it's nothing that would be like completely visible to the naked eye like you'd have to be a crafter who is just that meticulous or whatever or just someone in in general who is that meticulous but these are so really nice even the glitter one um it had it had a really small something that kind of came off to the side but it came up quite easily I'm assuming that's because the surface wasn't prepped so I'm happy overall I am I'm very happy with these and they're so shiny this one's gonna be personally mine <laughs> I am gonna make more though uh, because I'm sure that somebody's gonna see it and be like oh can you make me one but these are all these are all so so nice so there you go I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial and I hope that you guys are able to successfully make your phone grips if you have any questions definitely just you know leave them down in the comment section I am going to list every product that I used in the description um, but if you have any other questions, comments, uh, anything that you would do that I didn't do that you feel would make the process much easier, definitely leave that below because I know myself or someone else who watches this would benefit from that. So thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you next time.